We are back with more What's Now. Many individuals are waiting to go to the doctor because they're concerned about issues with COVID-19. Well, there's a new educational campaign called No Time to Wait. It really focuses on individuals who struggle with AFib. Let's take a look. Right, right. In 2020, some Americans are not getting the medical care they may need. In fact, according to a recent survey, many American adults, in fact, approximately 41% have delayed or avoided medical care, which includes routine and emergency or urgent care. A new educational campaign, No Time to Wait, has launched in part to raise awareness about symptoms of AFib, the most common type of irregular heartbeat, and talking to a doctor. Here now to explain why it's so important to learn about the potential associated symptoms of AFib and talk about the campaign are cardiologists and immediate past president of the Heart Rhythm Society, Dr. Andrea Russo and Jackie, an AFib patient. Thank you both of you for joining me here on Park City Television. And thank you for inviting us. Thank you. Dr. Russo, what has recent research suggested about people receiving medical care this year? And what have you observed during this time? Well, a recent survey of over 5,000 adults in the United States has shown that 41% may delay or completely avoid medical care. And, and this is concerning because we want individuals to seek medical care early to describe symptoms and, and so we can identify problems before it becomes something that can affect outcomes. And uh, Dr. Rosa, why is it important for people to learn about symptoms that may point to AFib in particular? Well, atrial fibrillation is a really common arrhythmia. It's an irregular heart rhythm. It's also referred to as AFib, and it can cause symptoms of palpitations, racing in your chest, shortness of breath, lightheadedness, dizziness, or sometimes even some chest discomfort. Now, these symptoms can be related to a lot of things, so you need to tell your doctor about those symptoms so you can decide what what's, you know, your particular situation is about. But in particular, atrial fibrillation can increase the risk of stroke by approximately five times, so it's really important to seek medical care. And Jackie, tell us more about your experience with AFib, what symptoms you had, and how you decided you should seek medical care. Well, I can tell you about that. Um, I've always had a little heart, heart racing with exercise and that, but I noticed that um, one night uh, my heart was racing when I was laying in bed. And it only lasted um, a few minutes or, and honestly, a few seconds. And uh, I could dismiss it because it wasn't very long, but when I went to my wellness visit, I decided to talk to my doctor about it and tell him that was a change. Well, he wanted me to have a cardiac stress test. So I had that cardiac stress test and that makes your heart go up because you're exercising. And so uh, when it was time for that to be done, uh, I could not get my heart to go back down. And so I eventually had to have a little electric shock for it to go back to normal rhythm and then I saw a cardiologist, and I was so thankful that I did because as Dr. Russo said, uh, I did not understand the risk of stroke with atrial fib. And Dr. Russo, what is the No Time to Wait campaign all about? Well, the No Time to Wait campaign is an educational campaign to raise awareness about atrial fibrillation, to let individuals know what kind of symptoms can occur and to seek medical attention. Um, I've been partnering with uh, Bristol-Myers Squibb Pfizer Alliance to, to help in this effort to, to let individuals know what symptoms they should be concerned about. Because just like Jackie, that you know, symptoms may be initially not so severe, but you, you want to report them to your doctor because it can have adverse consequences if you don't. Jackie, where can our listeners and viewers go for more information? Well, there's a wonderful website called notimetowait.com, and it has the symptoms, and it has information about atrial fib. So please go there, and if you have any questions, please contact your doctor. Will do. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Russo and Jackie, for joining us today. Jackie, really appreciate your honesty and willingness to share your experience. And Dr. Russo, this is really great and life-saving information that will help many people who have AFib. Well, thank you so much. It's a pleasure. Thank you.